because I'm just going to explain a little bit about what we do. Our objectives here today are to give you an introduction into making moulds with silicone. It's, the, it's a two-part silicone that we're using today. I've pre-mixed things out so that uh, it's going to make things a bit more streamlined today. Uh, I want to give you confidence to have a go, make mistakes and, and get better. Uh, so yeah, get, get good by being bad. Um, it will eventually save you time and money because uh, this it, it's very self self big silicone in the, the the quantities that you'll use for this sort of thing it's very very cheap very uh, very cost effective um, and we'd love to give you a good souvenir some some people didn't take theirs home but what I hope you'll be walking out the door with in about an hour's time is a little uh, silicone circle like this which is a mold uh, that you'll have. Uh, design yourself today and using that mold you could make uh, a wound that's uh, like one of these that you can stick onto an actor or a mannequin very easily <coughs> right commence Dan's rant um, what drove us to getting into this uh, well we we were we were applying makeup we we're applying moulage in you know longhand um, and in big events you do this several times a day and then you wipe it off the actor you've got to repeat yourself uh it's, it's very repetitive very time consuming and if the actor gets uh called away even like for a little bit uh, then it could really um delay a scenario happening if you've got to go and find them to to bruise their forehead or something um it does look cool it really it really does look cool when you do it properly so uh this this isn't uh, I'm not recommending that you only do this because this is bad. I'm saying that this, this is going to uh, give you another tool in your toolkit. So lockdown happened and I needed to be a bit more productive than on a very quiet day recreating War of the Worlds with mini tripods on my desk. <laughs> uh, so I decided to uh, find, a, find a new tool for my uh, toolbox. Um, and we, yeah, we, we, we'd heard... We've heard of uh, other technicians starting to make things out of self-mixed silicon. And to me, plastics and rubber were all very, it was like magic. Uh, I didn't know how it worked. So it, I was really nervous about trying it. I mean, have I got the right kind of environment? Um, am I, am I, is it dangerous? Am I going to make a huge mess? Am I going to damage everything? No, to be honest, it's, it's really simple. Uh, so long as you've got an inco pad on a desk, you can probably contain everything. Wonderfully, I've I've been I've mixed all this. And my hands are barely sticky now. <laughs> so we started with splats. So these were just poured into a tray, and as you can see, the kind of it's like the evolution of the splat here. We started off with like sort of uh, uh, stakes over here, and and then and then the edges got thinner and thinner, um, and that meant that uh, we we're able to make them more and more subtle. You'll notice that we've experimented with different skin tones. Uh, we use pigments, and you can use these very sparingly. It's brilliant because then they then they become quite translucent. The actor's skin tone shines through, but you you can you can create a, a catalogue of of wounds for yourself. And then when an actor shows up, you you can you can match it to the uh, match it to the skin tone. The splats got cleverer. We started doing weird things like setting tubes in them, and we could do things like this. So. This is really simple. We just put an NG tube on, a tr on the tray, poured a splat of silicone over it, and then I got a Stanley knife and made those cuts. So not subtle at all. And because of how I did it, I think I probably pierced the bottom, which is why it's gushing out un from under. So if, I, if I'd done it in a more precise way, we would have got a, 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 love, a, a far better effect. But it was very much in prototype stage, that. And that's the actor controlling that. So they very much got that. Uh, uh, standardized patient perspective they can they can be subtly um, squeezing squeezing the syringe until pressure is put on that and then they can stop and that the the, uh, the learner immediately gets that wonderful feedback um, it helped us do larger scale things so uh, we need our say our paramedics to do a big dressing session so instead of doing loads of moulage we just got all of our recess and arms out of the cupboard because they, they tend to sit there doing not very much so it's a resource that's wasted until you realize you need a bunch of disembodied arms with wounds on them. Um, and you give, give the paramedics all the range of, uh, of dressings that they, that they might use. Uh, so yeah, it, help, it helps us distribute that training very easily. 
um, we created a dedicated space for it. So um, yeah, that's, that's the middle of our storeroom. We, we created this lovely uh, bench and then it all, Ka Carrie, my, my colleague has been organizing these drawers so that uh, all the materials are at hand nice and quickly. And she's got a great production line. Um, and so we end up with stuff like the trays and trays and trays of wounds. Um, and we make so many because actors tend to walk off with them. Um, but they're so cheap that it doesn't matter. And as you can see, we have, uh, we've create, we, we create uh, the same wound in, different, in various colors so that no matter what actor turns up, we can match it to them. And it's great for our EDI. So the process evolved and we started using Petri dishes because it allowed us to you know, make something, put it to one side, pour something, put it to one side, and then it, it could just sit there until it goes off. So we start with plasticine and we create the wound. Um, and then we pour silicone on top of that, so it creates a mold. And then using that mold, we can now pretty much infinitely pump out uh, whatever wounds we want. So we're gonna move on to an activity now. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the back of the room and collect yourself a Petri dish with a bit of blue tack on it and a plastic knife. And I want you to construct, using the blue tack, construct in the Petri dish a, uh, a wound. So, so flatten out the blue tack in the bottom of the petri dish and then gouge out something, uh, something horrible. It takes your fancy. So ideally I would have used plasticine, but we had to forget something, didn't we? <laughs> so, uh, one, one of the reasons we, um, we started doing this was because when we went to buy fake wounds, the only places you could get them were selling severed legs, knives in the head, bullet, bullet wounds. Um, and it was all too extreme. And nobody was selling a basic surgical scar that needed a dressing change. So, and it was so simple that you know, we could just easily do it ourselves. Um, I go, go back to the splats, those things are very easy. Um, if, if you, it just gives you a patch of, of essentially skin color and you can put a cut in it. You can, it's, it's also really easy to suture up so you can, you can dress it up nicely and uh, surgical staples go in really nicely too. Um, so that, that means you, you, can, you can actually create a, uh, a, sur a surgical scar very nicely and, and slap it on an actor. With, and what we use is spirit gum, which is very, very useful. Okay, how are we doing with those wounds? Uh, everybody feel like they've, they've created uh, something suitable? It doesn't have to be pretty. Um, if, uh, in fact, if, if, if it goes wrong a little bit, that, that gives you um, a perspective on how it can go wrong. Uh, so if, if, if you're happy with what you've got, just make sure these sort of the, out, the outer edges are quite flat. If it's, if it's got a bit of a lip on it, the, uh, the silicone might wrap around it and it might get stuck. So if you, if you make sure it's nice and flattened out in the Petri dish. And once you've done that, would you like to come up to this front desk here and you'll be collecting a part A and a part B of the silicone. And if you'd like to take that, to find, find your nearest sort of inco padded table and do like a, a tongue depressor as well. Okay, so for those of you who've collected already, there's, uh, you need to mix one into the other. It doesn't matter which you mix into which, but what you're going to do is move, uh, just, just, uh, just homogenize it. One of them has a bit of um, purple in it, and that's to help you see when it's, it's nice and thoroughly mixed. Okay, so I recommend mixing for about a minute. Give it a, give it a good thorough stir. A few moments later. Once your mixture is nice and uh, mixed, yeah, I'd like you, yeah, pour it in. I recommend squeezing your cup so that you create a little um, spout. Uh, now, a, I think a recommended thing I've been told is to try and get a nice uh, fine pour very slowly into the mold, uh, and this will prevent air bubbles. But it'll be interesting to see uh, what comes out from anybody who's, uh, who's just dumped it in. Once you've mixed the two sides, you've got about six minutes before it starts becoming a little less workable. You know, it's not a definite. There was still some that was still quite liquid. Please take your Petri dish and tap it on the table a couple of times. That's gonna encourage air bubbles to rise to the surface. Uh, you, you, pro you probably won't see them. They, they will gradually work into the middle, I think. Great. So now you should have a petri dish with some purple slime in it 
um, take take photos and, and whatever you want to do, but uh, maybe yeah, just pop pop it to one side. Much much later. Has anybody poked their mold yet? Yeah, try because it. Should, so this this should be. It's, it's a nice warm room, and we're hoping it'll it'll have about a thirty minute set time. Yeah, so just just gently try. Yes, did you get the nice satisfying sound when it came out? Oh. Oh no. Um, so, is anybody's not set? If you if you just saw it with a fingernail, can't start peeling at the edges. Um, it's not actually stuck to the petri dish. It's probably just wedged in. Yeah, just and yeah, yeah. If you've still got, if the blue tack came with it, just just peel it out. That's satisfying. Though. That seems to have worked for everybody. Is anybody just stuck with some goop? No? Fantastic, well done guys. If you, if you go away and use these molds, um, make sure that you add like a layer of petroleum jelly on the mold before, or mold spray or something, but, but you know, petroleum jelly's fine. Just, just rub a bit on, just make sure it's nice and covered before you pour more silicone on. Because like, uh, like Andy says, otherwise you'll just get a solid lump of silicone. <laughs> the only thing that sticks to silicone is silicone. <laughs>